Lord, I say, the Father, this is real. Will you watch over me? Will you raise them up to be strong? I don't, I, I'm just a man with flesh. This is what you call for in your scriptures. You said they wore studs and fringes, they got it on. You said they are follow the law, they doing it. You said under your house shine, they ought to love one another. Are they doing it? get and understand how important it is that God has nothing to do with free will. Christ has nothing to do with free will. Because of Christianity is why we think we're supposed to do what we think is right. And we do what we think and what we believe is right. We were supposed to do what God says is right. We were always supposed to do what Christ said was right. You understand? You got John chapter 9 verse 31. We are going to let the scriptures speak for themselves. You understand? Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 9, and verse 31. Now we know that God hath not sinned. Say what? Now we know that. Says, now we what? Now we know. Says what? Now we know. Now this is something that we know. This is something that we are supposed to know. But because of Christianity, because of, our, because of those pastors, because of the bishops, because of the deacons, we don't know this information. You go into Christian church, you do not learn anything about Christ. You learn nothing about God. You learn nothing about obedience. You know nothing about the law. You learn nothing, you understand? Because Christianity has nothing to do with God. Christianity has nothing to do with Christ. It says what? Now we know. It says that we know. This is what we were supposed to know. Go ahead. That God heareth not sinners. What? That God heareth not sinners. God said, we know that God heareth not sinners. That's what the Bible says. What does it mean to be a sinner? Does anybody know out there what it means to be a sinner? You understand a sinner means you have transgressed against the law. The only way to be a sinner is to break the law. Do you know how many laws are out there in the Bible? Does anyone know how many laws are in the Bible? There's over 600 something laws in the Bible. And the Christian church minimizes it to 10. And they barely do that. We were never, when you go into the law, you was never supposed to eat pork. You was never supposed to eat shrimp and lobster. As a people, we were never supposed to eat the pork, the shrimp, the lobster. We were never supposed to commit fornication. We was never supposed to commit adultery. We was never, a man was never supposed to have sex, have relations with another man. A woman was never supposed to have relations with another woman, you understand? Like these were against, like this was against the laws of God, you understand? Right. We, this was against the laws of God. It says what? I'm going to read. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. The Lord heareth not sinners. All right? Because of Christianity, we believe that God is talking to us. Because of Christianity, we believe that we have a personal relationship with God. We don't have a personal relationship with God. I'm set, I'm happy to break it to you. I'm happy to give you the barrier. I'm, I'm glad to be the barrier of bad news, but God is not talking to you. God, you do not have a personal relationship with God. You understand? Especially if you think God hears you, if you are a sinner, I bet, I bet, I do. I'm gonna tell you right now, he does not hear you. He doesn't hear sinners. He doesn't hear the people who break the law. He doesn't hear the ones who commit adultery. He doesn't hear the ones, if you're a man, that has relations with the man. He doesn't hear the ones, if you are a woman, having relations with the woman. He doesn't hear if you are a man or a woman that's okay with voting. How many of y'all, raise of hands, how many knew that we were never supposed to vote? if you're so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American? How many knew that you, was ne you were never in charge and it was never up to you to make the decision to choose a leader over yourself? Well, that's in the law. But every four years in America, no thanks to Christianity, through the Democratic Party, they teach black people and they teach the Latinos to go vote for a president. That's against the law. You understand? Continue reading up. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, 
But if any man be a worshiper of it's God, what? what? But if say, any what? say one more time. But but meaning rather, you understand these words are important to listen to. It's absolutely imperative that we understand comprehension, right. reading comprehension. Right. English is very important to learn. A reading, reading is a very important skill to learn. Right. If you don't know how to read, then you're not going to be able to understand. Reading comprehension is imperative. It says what? Right. But meaning rather, but. If any man be a worshiper of God. If any man be a worshiper of God. The Lord is about to explain how to properly worship the Lord. How to worship the Most High. If you go into the Christian church, all they talk about is worship this, worship that. Your pastors, your deacons, your evangelists, the, the first lady. Now there's a first gentleman because of, the, because of Christianity and because of the acceptance of homosexuality. All right. They have not, they now have something called a first gentleman. How many of us knew that? I bet no one knew that the Christian church approved of a first gentleman. There's no longer a first lady now. It's the first gentleman. How disgusting and abominable is that? I call that blasphemy. The Lord calls it blasphemy. You understand? Like we're about to learn how to properly worship the Most High. It's important that we know this. It says what? But if any man be a worshiper of God, 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 and doeth his will, and do his what? And doeth his will. Did it say your will? His will. Did it say free will? His will. Did it say make your own decisions? Right. His will. Did it say do what you like? Right. His will. Did it say do what you feel is good? His will. Does it say what you think is right? right? His will. Let me explain something. The Lord always wanted blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to do His will. Right. It was never supposed to be your will. One was never supposed to come to the conclusion that you are to do what you think is right and do what you feel is right and do what feels good. Here's the problem. Because of Christianity, it allowed us to go through a deep path in the deep darkness of something called lust, do you understand? Because Christianity and because of America, we have now become susceptible to things that we were never supposed to have access to, man. Because of the internet, because of the lifestyle, because of the beliefs, because of Christianity, we have now become tolerant and now we have become open to different type of lifestyles. That's why it was important to be divided. That's why it was important to be separate. That's why we were never supposed to have all this freedom. That's why we were never supposed to have free will. Because free will, free will brings the opposite of division that the Lord wanted. You cannot accomplish the Lord's will if you don't believe in division. You cannot accomplish the Lord's will if you don't believe in being separate. You cannot accomplish the Lord's will if you don't believe in keeping the law. You cannot accomplish the Lord's will if you believe that you can eat pork. You're not able to accomplish the Lord's will if you agree to go every four years and vote for a president. You cannot accomplish the Lord's will if you are a sinner. We were never, we were never supposed to do that. Go ahead, what does the Lord say? But if any man be a worshiper of God and do of his will. Do of his what? Do of his will. Go ahead. Him he heareth. Say what? Him he heareth. Say what? Him he heareth. That's, right. that's who he is. That's the right. Lord hears the man that doeth his will. As a man or as a woman, you are never supposed to come to that conclusion to do what you feel is right. I understand. Sin may be gratified. Sin may be satisfied. Right. Sin is so gratifying. I understand, right? Sin, sin tastes so good and so delicious, you just can't stop. I understand the point. Go ahead. Okay, no, no sweat, no sweat. So, and, and, and when you and when you indulge in that sin, when you indulge in that lifestyle, we end up destroying ourselves. We end up be, we end up becoming ruinous as a people. You are never supposed to be susceptible to what America pushes. But the only reason why we are, the only reason why we indulge in the behaviors of America. Because we don't know how to be separate. 
and we don't understand that we were supposed to do God's will That's and right. not our own. Right. But no thanks to Christianity, now we are doing the will of our own selves. And that's against God. And that's against the Most High. Right. Read that read that, uh, that last verse again. Can you hear it? Oh. Oh. Verse 11. Make sure you put a make sure you put finger on that scripture. You understand? Like this is the problem that we have in the black, Hispanic, and Native American community. We were never supposed to indulge ourselves in this kind of behavior, nor this conduct. And it's all throughout the Bible. It's all, go ahead. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. And too much, and I, I, and I want everyone to understand this, too much of, too much of sin is absolutely ruinous. When a man decides to lay down with another man, what does that bring throughout the earth? That brings HIV and AIDS. Right. There's a new disease coming from the UK. There's some STD called some rash, and it's only being found by homosexuals. Right. It's only being found from a man having relations with another man. Right. The Lord is going to continue to bring plagues right. to the entire earth if we do not stop doing our own will but his own. We were supposed to do the Lord's will. That's Go ahead right. and give me Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. You understand? Go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Like it's like like we need to understand, man, as a people, man, as as a people, if you are so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, you need to come into this truth and learn how not to gratify yourself. Learn how not to satisfy yourself. Learn how to not indulge in those fornications. How many of us, how many out there know what fornication means? Does anyone know? Well, I bet no one knows because of the Christian church. No one knows what fornication means because of the pastors, because of the bishops, because of the deacons, because of the evangelists. Fornication, by definition, means unlawful, uh, unlawful relations or unlawful sex, you understand? That's what fornication is. And the Lord is against it, you understand? The Lord is against that type of lifestyle. The Lord is against a man being with a man. The Lord is against a woman being with a woman. And guess what the Lord is also against? I know this might be a surprise, but the Lord is against a man and a woman having interracial marriages. That's against the law. How many knew that? How many knew the Lord? The Lord wanted division between races, between nations of people. I know I broke some hearts out there. I know some of y'all are sad. Y'all can't get rid of Becky. Y'all can't get rid of Stephanie. Y'all can't get rid of Ashley. Y'all can't get rid of Heather. Well, let me explain to you. The Lord requires you to get rid of Heather because that's what it means. That's what it means to serve the Lord. That's his will. The Lord's will is about division. The Lord's will is about separation. The Lord's will is about not gratifying yourself. The Lord's will is about not satisfying yourself. That's what the Lord's will is about. And that's what we need to understand. You got Matthew 6 and 9? Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 9. After this matter, therefore pray ye. It says, after this matter, pray ye. Christ, this right here, these words are in red. And these are the words of Christ. And Christ is about to teach us what it means and how to pray. Prayer is important. Prayer, I know, some, all of us know about prayer, right? We pray every day. The majority of us try to pray every day. Well, we pray back here all the time. But there are requirements that come with prayer. The Christian church won't teach you that there's requirements in a spirit behind the prayers that you tell him, that you send up to him. But the Christian church will never teach you that. But Christ right here in Matthew 6 and 9 through 10, Christ is about to teach us how to properly pray. Christ is about to teach us the spirit behind our prayers. And this is how you should pray. You understand? Go ahead, huh? After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father. Our what? Our Father. Because the Lord is a Father. I know that might be a foreign concept, no thanks to Christianity. We no longer have fathers like we're supposed to in, in, in the black home. We don't have fathers, you understand, in the black, Hispanic, and Native American home like we were supposed to. No thanks to Christianity and no thanks to America. The, it says what? Our father. Our father. The Lord, is, the Lord is a father figure to us, you understand? Right. And if you look back here, and the men back here, we are fathers. This is what fathers look like. Fathers look masculine. Fathers are black. Fathers have beards. 
Right. Fathers have boots. Fathers look like they have some damn masculinity, you understand? Right. Some damn militancy. That's what it means to look like a father and to be a father. You understand? It says what? Our Father. Go ahead. Which are in heaven. Which are in what? In heaven. In heaven. That's the realm where the Most High dwells. Hallowed be thy name. It says what? Hallowed be thy name. It said what? Hallowed be thy name. Christ said, Hallowed be thy name. What does it mean to hallowed be thy name? Some of y'all thought hallowed meant something that's nothing there. Because no one knows reading comprehension. Hallowed is a word that means holy. Meaning the Lord's name is separate. The Lord's name is about division. The Lord's name is about separation. Throughout the Bible, it talks about separation and division. That's important to understand. But because of Christianity, we don't understand that fact. You understand? We were supposed to fashion ourselves after the laws of God, which divided us from everyone on the earth. You understand? Go ahead. Thy kingdom come. It says what? Thy kingdom come. It says what? Thy kingdom come. The Lord said thy kingdom come. Does anybody know what a kingdom is? What does it mean? What is a kingdom? A kingdom is a government. You understand? A kingdom is a government. A monarchy ran by a man, which is a king. How many of y'all know that that's what kingdom meant? Lord well, said what? Thy kingdom come. The Lord said that thy kingdom come. Christ said the kingdom of God is coming. That's, that, that's a message right there. That's also a warning. That's also something that we need to understand. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. What? Thy will be done. It said what? Thy will be done. It said thy will be done. This is the second place throughout the Bible where it talks about God's will being done. Right. Now, we have to, now we have to ask the question, why is our pastors telling us that there's free will? Why is our deacons telling us that we have freedom and we have the right to do what we feel is right and to do what we think is right? Why is that happening? It said what? Thy will be done. It's supposed to be thy will be done. That's the right. Lord's will is supposed to be done. Not your will, not grandma's will, not mommy's right. will, not Uncle Bobby's will, not the Democratic Party's will, right. not the Republican Party's will, right. not the Independent Party's will. It said what? Thy will be done. Thy will, will be done. That's the right. Lord's will is supposed to be done. That's right. Go ahead. In earth. And what? In earth. And what? In earth. Uh oh. I thought I thought we had to die to go to heaven. I thought I thought I had to lay my eyes to sleep to go to heaven. And said what? In earth. In earth. And what? In earth. This is going to happen here. The Lord's will is going to happen on earth. That's where it's going to happen. Right here, where your feet stand, where you breathe, is where the Lord's will is going to be done. Right. Say what? In earth, as it is in heaven. Right, because it's happening right now. You understand? Go ahead. Right. Give us right. this day. And we are doing the Lord's will right now. That's if you look at these brothers right here, masculine brothers, strong brothers, militant brothers, with boots, beards, and braids, we are all doing the Lord's will. Right. Right. And if you come into the Israelite school of universal practical knowledge, you can see and learn how to do the Lord's will. That's right. But you'll never learn how to do the Lord's will in the Christian church. Right. You will never learn how to do the Lord's will if you continue to be a Baptist, if you continue to be a Methodist, if you continue to be a Pentecostal, if you continue to be a non, uh, what's it called, a non-denomination. You will never learn how to do the Lord's will unless you come into the Israelite school of universal practical knowledge under Commandant General Yohanan. There is no other way to do it.
same shit, but a different day. 